Hello, I'm Dan Salzer with Plymouth State Athletics, and I'm joined this afternoon by Plymouth State field hockey head coach, Bonnie Lord. Coach, thank you for joining me. Thanks for having me, Dan. You've been here for nearly two decades, your 19th season coaching at Plymouth State. What have you enjoyed most about coaching here over the last nearly two decades? Uh, I would have to say the Division Three philosophy was um, a really nice level to go up from the high school level that I had been at for 20 years. I really enjoy the fact that it's academic and athletic base versus like an academic versus athletics type of base. Um, I've enjoyed watching the college level people who then go on to become very successful and hope that field hockey has had a little bit of part of that. Um, created some great relationships over the years, uh, weddings, births, you know, all of those types of things. So that kind of all filters into I enjoy being here the most because of the people, the players, the administration, the folks that you deal with every day, like yourself. You didn't lose too many seniors last year. You lost three to graduation, but three critical players. How have you been able to kind of fill that void with the new players and the returning players on this year's roster? Um, you know, one of our biggest losses, so to speak, was the graduation of Liv Bates, um, being a four-year goalkeeper starter and recognized throughout Division Three as one of the top goalkeepers. So that was our first place to start. Um, I've always built the team from the goal cage out and probably has to do with the fact that I was a goalie myself. So I feel like they're the quarterback of the team. So our first place was with Jessica Disler. Uh, having a player that was returning from a year, having had the, the benefit of having Liv as a mentor and a, and a coach even during our preseason. So we started there with, okay, we, how solid will we be there? And then what do we need to put in front of her in order to even move that up? Because we had lost a key defensive player out of our group back there. Um, so then we started to build that and we were very, very pleasantly surprised with two young ladies who had not come to us as defenders, but definitely had the skill set and the, and the mental game to do that. So first we filled that defense with um, you know, Kylie Hamm and, and Patty Newhard as captain, and then um, Mariah Lusher and um, Olivia Geyser. Um, and we were very, very pleased with how they came about. So now we thought, okay, now we have a little bit of time for Jess to get her wheels underneath her, which, as you can see, we didn't need to worry about that at all. The midfield was a huge, huge loss with Katie Martin. She really directed the traffic in there for her four years that she was here. And Maddie Kay, Maddie Capascalian, was the one that we felt, you're going to have to fill those shoes to do that. And she has. She has anchored that midfield. She's got basically two new people on either side of her, Keely Bartolini, who had come back from last season, um, and then it was all newbies, so to speak, to put in there. But once again, we had the goalie set, we had the defense set. Now we're still working with our transition midfield, but good about that. Haley Wakefield back in the center on the front um, helped take up a little bit of the, the loss of having Lily Davis there on, uh, on the left side. So um, we've paired her up nicely with Kaylee Rafferty, who really worked hard this summer, coming back in as a junior, not having been a, sp a starter, but having earned that spot legit now has been crucial. And then to have a nice little surprise of Jesse Mosquita coming in um, for a freshman right wing, or first year right wing. So we just continue to build the team with the strengths that we have versus the losses that we've faced. Looking at things though, it's been a tough start to the season. Your first week in an action at the Carol Newhoff tournament go 0-2, a tough against tough competition to say the least. Uh, SUNY Cortland five nothing loss and the consolation of one nothing loss against UMaine Farmington, but you guys bounced back nicely yeah. this past week against Bridgewater State in the co a conference opener in, in the Little East, a 2-1 overtime victory. But it's been the injuries that have been a factor for your team this year. Uh, how have you been able to overcome these injuries? And really, what's impressed you the most with this team over the first two weeks of the season? Oh, versatility, flexibility, and work ethic are the biggest points in it because we have had, we have a small team to begin with, um, and then we had uh, some key injuries, one of them which occurred in the Carol Newhoff tournament on that Saturday, um, which very much led to 
the large number of goals scored, ag scored against us. It was very much a mental, emotional type of, of letdown with that. Not the least bit concerned with it was SUNY Cortland. We would never see them again if only in NCAA type of play. They, we had to make more adjustments. We've been adjusting, adjusting, adjusting as, uh, since preseason with all of the different things that we've had going on with injuries. And uh, we had to adjust again for Sunday's game against Humane Farmington um, up there. So, you know, people moved in and out of positions and nobody ever said, oh, I don't want to play there. Or, oh, I can't play that spot, coach. I mean, this team, the chemistry of the team, the willingness to do whatever it takes has been absolutely wonderful to see. And when we got a, a you know, the one nothing against Humane Farmington, okay, now, now let's go, let's get on with it. And then we had another, we had some concussion protocols going on and when we came out to face Bridgewater on uh, Saturday, knowing that we had one sub and that we had people on the field that were in positions that they perhaps hadn't played until mm. Thursday of that week. I, I just can't say enough of the work that they've put in, the, the mental game that they're playing out there, the focus that they're exhibiting, and the care and compassion for one another. I mean, there's, there's all your parts that you need to be successful. And I was absolutely thrilled, thrilled for them to pull out that overtime win. And it looks like we're gonna have everybody back for Framingham on Friday. So that's, that's where we're headed now is, let's see if we can get some consistency with positions. But it gave us the opportunity to see a great deal from a lot of different people. And that can only increase your depth as you go on. We may not have it in number, but we'll have it in position. We talk about that Framingham State this coming Friday at 7 p.m. down at the New Hampton School. Now that you're getting some of those pieces back in the roster that are finally healthy or coming back from injury, what do you have to game plan for against the Rams? What are you expecting to see from Framingham State? How do you guys get the win on Friday night? Uh, Framingham State is um, a very, uh, very fast and um, passionate type of very energy based program. Uh, their program has had some tough years and the coaches that came in two years ago are still there and they've done a tremendous, tremendous job with the program. The girls play good hockey, they play, you know, patterned hockey, they play strategical hockey. So in that, you know, we know that we will have to play our game, which is possession and we need to make sure that we are taking care of all of our positions on the field and not just a few. But they'll come in ready to play, and I look forward to it. It should be a good game. Well, Coach, thank you very much for your time. Best of luck on Friday night. Thanks, Dan.